What's up guys, ScootDog85 here. Uh, Going to be doing an install video of a complete wet sound remake on my 2002 Moomba Movius. I've got a MC2 source unit with the MC transom remote that we're going to focus on in today's video. And there will be four or five part videos discussing how everything uh, was installed that you see pictured here. My two uh, amplifiers, the DX4 which is an 800 and the DX6 which is a 6 channel 1200 amp. I've got some Tower Revo 10 version 2, get the PSE 12 sub with 12 inch radiator, and then I've got six coaxial Revo 6s going in with the LED lights. So look forward to this install and hopefully helping you guys out along the way with any questions you might have. I hope I address those. These are some things I, I didn't see out there on YouTube that uh, I would have wanted to know before the install. So hope that I can help you out. So the MCR2 or the MCTR, what we're going to look at today, is the Wet Sounds Wired Transom Auxiliary Remote. This gives you control at the back of the boat. So when you're out drinking or tubing with your buddies, you don't have to climb in the boat to one mute it, turn it up, or change the station. This retails for about two hundred dollars on the Wet Sounds uh, website, and it's compatible with the MC1 and the and the Wet Sounds MC2 source unit. Uh, the kit does include a 23 foot cable uh, that plugs right into the source units. So once you get the drill hold and it mounted, you'll run that cable, tuck it, and, and mount it and connect it to the uh, source unit. So here's the 2002 Moomba that we purchased uh, at the beginning of summer. Got a pretty good deal on it, especially with how crazy the... Uh, uh, boat prices have been this year, and we're, we're kind of making it our own, but you can see it's it's totally stock, uh, stock Kenwood radio, no Bluetooth, no USB, so it is definitely stuck in 2002, and we're going to upgrade that bad boy. Um, we decided to put the transom remote on the bottom right, just under the vent, um, and under the rub rail. Uh, this was an area that we, was one, out of the water line, and, and two, very easily accessible when you are hanging out. Uh, drinking or partying. So one of the first things we had to do was we took the source unit or the MC uh, transfer remote and we decided that you know we need to get a good trace because once you drill into the fiberglass there's no turning back. So we got the uh, the unit traced to fit and then you know there's the hole which was uh, pretty cool. Got the hole finished. Uh, was pretty scary putting the, that big of a hole into my boat. But we sealed it up chambered the edges and then attached the source unit here uh, the transfer remote which this looked awesome in my opinion I'm just going to show you guys kind of the, the video that went along with it from the process how we drilled the hole how we opened up the hole and then how we mounted the radio Ooh, that's my jam. Let me get floating on over here. Yeah. This is kind of the video uh, with it in the <laughs> So that's it installed. This is where we ran the wires. Once we mounted it, uh, we took out a panel here um, inside the locker and was able to access the wall. Got it mounted on the back side and we ran the cables up that right side and just kind of zip tied them with the speaker wires and plugged into the source unit. So what we're going to, what, what I'll show you guys now, let me get to it is the MC2. Um, this is the Wet Sounds controller unit or source unit. This retails for about 350 bucks. It's got Bluetooth, Sirius XM, Pandora ready. Um, we use it mainly just with Bluetooth. Um, the dimensions on it is about four, four inches up and down to five inches wide. Uh, you do have a little bit of depth. Um, you need to account for it three inches in depth. Um, most, most boats have that, that room you can work with, find out where you want to put it. 
Here's a picture of the backside with the RCA cables and the speaker hookup. You'll need to attach that speaker connection um, to run your power um, and then your RCA cables if you're running an amplifier. We ran, an, uh, we ran RCA cables. We got the six channel RCA cable, 23 foot. And I'm gonna kind of go into how we wired it to our amplifier because that was a question that I couldn't get answered. So when you're looking on the back of the MC2, um, you have three RCA pair outlets that come out. You have the front line outlet, left and right. You have the rear line out, left and right. And then you have the back zone two. What the MC2 is capable of is you can control two zones uh, volume wise on the boat. So what we did is we hooked up all the interiors and in the sub on the main channel and then our zone two was tower. So we could actually lower the tower speakers or the in boat um, separately. The way we ran that, we took RCA cables one and two and we ran those and connected them to the channel one and two on the DX6 amplifier. We connected those to the front line out left and front line out right. Then we took RCA cables three and four out of the rear, left and right, and connected those to channel five and six on the DX6. And I'll explain why we hooked them up, why we skipped channel three and four, and went to five and six on the on the amps. And then on the zone two out, we went RCA cables five and six and connected those to channel one and two. So on the amps we ran on the SDX6, like I told you, uh, RCA cables one and two to channel one and two. And then we selected on the SDX6 that we wanted the channel three and four input to come from channel one and two. So we can run channels one through four off those two RCA cables. We took RCA cables three and four and connected those on channel five. And then on the input, we, we selected that we wanted that source to come from channel five and six. That's our sub inputs. The SDX four, um, we ran channels one and uh, we ran channels five and six RCA cables uh, to channel one and two on the DX four, and then we selected the the input to come from channel one and two. Now this is in mono. They do recommend that you can split the RCA cables to run to channel one, two, three, and four. So you can have stereo. Uh, otherwise, we just ran it in mono and, and haven't had any any issues with that. So looking at my dash, you can see it's kind of outdated. I have the, the old Kenwood unit up on the top right, uh, control unit, and then I have my key switch on the left. And and I was spitballing, you know, where did where do I want to mount this thing? I had some ideas to mount it under the dash, get some extra fiberglass, and potentially mount it under the dash. Um, but getting into it. We realized, hey, we got we got some extra starboard. Let's go ahead and make a custom custom piece and, and move our key switch. Um, so here's just kind of the idea where we thought we were going to mount the radio, but I'd be kicking it, getting in and out of the uh, driver's seat. So here's where we ended up mounting the, the source unit. Um, we built the backing plate, uh, made it fit the key switch hole, um, and this is kind of the side picture you can see where it's mounted on the on the on the radio. Uh, we just moved that key switch and, and really it's very functional right there. And then here's the key switch where we ended up moving the key switch. We took out the old Kenwood uh, unit and just remounted the key switch up on, on the top right. So uh, pretty excited with the turnout. The radio's been bumping and I'll get back to you guys with the interior and the sub installation on the next video. Thanks.